So we are talking about empiricism today. So empiricism is a uh, you know, core fundamental principle which a Scrum framework is built upon. So empiricism is all about you know uh, getting knowing about the experiences we have before, getting insights from there, and making decisions based on what we know from that. So the standard definition is asset that knowledge comes from experience and make decisions based on what is known. We look back, uh, if you are using Scrum Framework, probably you are going to uh, you know, introspect, retrospect your product and process and find insights on how it is good or how it is not good and adopt that same on what you're going to do next. In order to do that, we need three basic fundamental pillars. Transparency, inspection, and C is very key, the first step, because without transparency, you can't really inspect and adopt. In Scrum Framework, you know, making our product backlog available to all the stakeholders, which is clear and visible, and all the artifacts, all the, you know, metrics, the progress, is made transparent to all the stakeholders. So that is the first step we are going to do uh, so that we have everything transparent. We get an opportunity to inspect whatever we are going to uh, check upon. So if you are going to inspect the product backlog, its completeness or uh, its, uh, its relevance, the value, so you are going to inspect on those artifacts which are transparent. Then you may find a variance, you may not find a variance. You may find, uh, you know, you can do something better to improve the process and so on. So after inspection, you're going to adopt. Let us take an example of a daily standup you do in Scrum, wherein the artifacts, the board, the work is made transparent to all the stakeholders. You inspect it by asking, questions to others, like what happened yesterday? Are there any impediments or blockers? What you're going to do tomorrow or the next? So, so this kind of inspection let us know, you know, any variances, uh, any help team needs and so on. So then we adopt our plan accordingly. If you take an example from retrospective, you make all our points, the team's points, on you know, retrospecting on the process transparent. Then you inspect on it and how it went well or how it doesn't went well. You take action items from it and you adopt it. So this is empiricism. You learn from your experience and make decision based on what is known. So what is Scrum? Scrum is a framework, right? Where you can uh, you know address complex problems where you know, creativity, uh, productivity are very important while you deliver the product. The focus is more on uh, delivering the product which provides the best value. You know, maybe money, sometimes it can be you know, reputational. Suppose uh, if there's a data breach in your company and you're building some, some you know, product to you know, tackle that, that value you are expecting out of that product is more than you know the money or written up investment it is more about reputational value you are looking into there can be business value there can compete competition edge which which will secure a place in the market for long so scrum is a lightweighted framework because the rules are very simple and less you have few roles few artifacts a uh, few uh, events you need to do in a certain way to you know, make Scrum running. It is simple to understand that it is, it is very lightweight and has lesser number of rules. It is simple to understand, but it is difficult to master because of the lot of, uh, you know, practicality and the diverse set of places you're going to implement Scrum and the transformation needed, not only on the way you work, also about the mindset, how, how you approach it. So it is a difficult to master thing. So like, like I told, Scrum is founded on empirical process control, which is again, same thing. 
transparency inspection and documentation makes it transparent, provided opportunity. and adopt or take decisions based on what is known. At very high level, you can see Scrum framework has five values, five events, three artifacts, and three roles. That's why it was told, you know, it is a simple framework, which is owned by a product owner. And the team goes for a sprint planning, where they create a sprint goal and sprint backlog which is a subset of product backlog. And every day the team and once the iteration comes or the time box, then they will review the product so that an increment is created which is accepted or rejected. You also have a sprint retrospective where you know the team looks on the process, how they have built. It is not on the product, but how we are building the product. So if you can see, you can see all the transparency inspection and adaptation poured into this. You have product backlog, which is transparent. You have sprint backlog, which is transparent. You have the increment, which is transparent, which you're sharing with your end user so that they can review it. You have goals, you have values, transparent. You have a lot of events like the sprint, sprint planning, daily scrum, retrospectives and review where inspection and adaptation can happen. Uh, so you have rules that people can do different things, take actions based on all the inferences. So this is all a high level about Scrum framework. So as we go, we'll learn more. Thanks all for joining. Have a nice day. Hello all. Welcome back. Uh, we just. We we'll talked about uh, all the concepts in uh, PMP exam. The very first concept, PMP is for project management professionals. So let us talk about projects and what project management is all about. So project is a temporary endeavor with a definite beginning and end. So it's done for a specific period of time. You know, it has a start date and end date. You also do a project to create a unique product service or result. Example, set up a manufacturing unit or a production unit is an example of project. So how does a project differ from an operation? An operation is not temporary. It is a continuous process. So, so you are a baker. You are making cakes which will be packed and sent and sold. You are continuously making it. So there is no definite and then for uh, operation. It is a continuous. A Coke plant, uh, you know, make uh, Coca Cola drinks and, you know, cater to its, uh, you know, end users. It is an operation. But you go back to the same Coke and they are making some unique uh, recipe for a new drink, you know. So when they do that, they'll go for a project to build that unique recipe for the first time where they, you know, they put a temporary endeavor to build it. They have a start date. They'll put a six months period to build the recipe, a beginning and end date. So why they're doing that? They want to create something unique, which is never there before, which is a product or service or result. And we are building some new software product or you are building some new service. So it can yield a result as well, a completely new one. So this is the difference between a project and operation. So a project management is a science and art to apply the knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to activities to meet project requirements. So the key thing we need to look at is science and art. The project management is a science because you're going to use a lot of techniques, mathematical techniques, project management, technical aspects. You know, you calculate flow, you calculate schedules, use different kinds of tools and technologies to actually do that stuff. But it is also an art because you have human resources, you have a stakeholders, you have a lot of different people, you need to, you know, a lot of different stakeholders, you need to manage the communications, engage the stakeholders, you know, you need to do a lot of uh, soft, use a lot of soft skills, like emotional intelligence, leadership skills, 
you need to wear different hats. So project management is both science and art. Why are you doing that? You want to meet the project requirements. So you want to build a product. You want to build a new recipe for a drink. You want to meet those uh, requirements. You want to build that. You want to help others to build that. So you use project management to you know, help aid in that process. So project management enables the achievement of organizational goals and objectives effectively and efficiently. So that's how it helps. So we, we'll see different contexts where projects can be initiated. These are the four broad uh, classifications PMI has provided. So uh, a lot of projects can get initiated when you want to meet the legal or social requirements. So to give an example, there is certain legislature got changed, like uh, you have GST in India, a new tax is put on uh, goods and services. You have a commercial software, and so you need to update them to you know, meet those uh, legal requirements. There may be some new regulatory system in place. You need to adapt to that. So projects may get kick-started because of that need. Projects also get initiated when there is a need to create new products or improve an existing product, fix some of the product processes and services. Uh, classic examples are you have a mobile phone, you want to improve it, you know, create a better version of it. So you a project to you know, create a new thing. You want to fix some products, you may want to do that as well. The other context satisfying stakeholder requests are needs. So stakeholders are everyone who are interested you know, with whatever you're building. There are some people who build it, like our development teams, who are inventors. There are some people who influence the project by money or power, or whatever, the senior leadership, client, you know, uh, some of the clients. They they can put money, you know, based on that your project context can change. So there are different stakeholders. They have some requests and needs. In order to meet them, you may start a project. So a certain uh, Assume like uh, Microsoft is, uh, you know, has built my MS Office, and we as customers, we are using that. And a lot of customers, you know, we need to have a different kind of feature. May maybe Microsoft may do some market research, and then they want to do a project to satisfy the ask of the customers, the request and needs. That is one of the context. And the other one is implement or change business and technological strategies. So. Sometimes technology strategies can change as based on current scenarios. A lot of people may want to move to AWS cloud or a public cloud, or they want to have their data exposed as cloud services. So that can initiate new projects where you want to migrate or build something on cloud, or want to use different set of new technologies to make the you know, move away from the legacy systems. Or there are different kind of, you know, uh, uh, construction business is happening and there is some new technological in innovation where there is a low cost uh, uh, no, no construction material being built using nanotechnology. That technology strategies uh, may enable the companies to use that and that may create new set of projects. Or business context as well, like how technology strategies come into picture. There are a lot of business strategies as well and you know the change in those business strategy may, you know, change the project context and you know may helps to evolve new projects and initiate new projects so these are the broad classifications of uh, project initiation where how it can happen so why do you need uh, project management because poorly managed projects or absence of project management result in a lot of uh, things we don't want like missed deadlines cost overrun poor quality rework Uncontrolled expansion of projects, there is no boundary at all. It's going, you may never know how to control it. Loss of reputation because of all these things. Unsatisfied stakeholders because they are not getting what they want. Failure in achieving objectives for which the project was undertaken. So, so these are the, all the problems when you don't have uh, project management in place or project manager to run it. So as a project manager, you are there to proactively look into these things and make sure that these things never happen. There are issues, risks, and a lot of stuff. So you plan for that. You are there to help organizations, projects, 
not to meet these kind of uh, poorly managed projects and their after effects. Thank you. We'll meet back.